Want to enjoy breakfast with me? Heck yeah. Today, we install our warm board. In our perfect world, this is only a day's activity, but we have no idea what could possibly come up, so um, we're gonna try to just take it hour by hour. Jesse's gone ahead and looked through the instructions, but I have not, so I'm probably gonna do that here um, just to make sure we're both completely on the same page. You think I wanna read the instructions. I really just want an excuse to drink my chai uninterrupted. <laughs> Feel better? Yarp. Before we get to this fine stuff, we have to do something less fun and drill concrete one more time. Our thinking is this. If we're gonna have a bad day, we'd rather know soon and not wait until the very end of the day. So here's hoping. Jesse, just because we got away with sin once doesn't mean we can do it repeatedly. Yeah. Are you scared? I would say that Radiant Roulette's probably one of my least favorite. We looked games. at multiple drawings and we know that our uh, Radiant is about 12 inches apart starting from the wall, but it could be as little as 8 inches apart based on our drawings. We have a couple narrow areas. All that said, we planned for worst case scenario. Yep. And we're pretty sure that where we're going to drill, we should be more than fine. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. We're good. Still good. Okay, that's one one hole. Because our radiant right here is in a uh, Zigzags, I think? Yeah. It's not in straight lines. We should be good on the second hole, like 99.9%. We good? Good. Yeah. Good. Can I do the fun, rewarding part? Huh. And you can just do all the scary parts? Yeah, I'll do the risky part so I get the blame for all the bad things. Yeah, happen. and then I'll do all the fun parts. Like, yeah. you do the planning, and then I'll, like, tack everything in place. Yeah, sounds good. And then stand up like you did something. You like, got it. I did it. Yeah, exactly. I took no risk, and I won. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Tight. More. I'll, I'll do it more. Okay. I'm just doing this. Okay. Um, can I toenail this in too? Yeah, we need to toenail that in Sweet. with GRKs and we actually need to do the front post too. Whoa. These are gnarly. It's pretty good. not going anywhere. No. Unless Bobby runs into it with his car one day. Well, Bobby can run into it with hot wheels. But Bobby's not allowed to park in the garage exactly. until he can demonstrate quality driving. We'll put up some cones in the driveway for Bobby to negotiate yeah. around until Bobby can navigate the cones safely. Yeah. No parking in the garage. So this is going to work on getting our squash blocks cut and installed while I do some other finish framing. Like with this post, on the timber frame, there's going to be a post above it bearing down on this beam. And the only bearing surface that it would have is the eye joist to transfer all that weight to this post below. So Alyssa is going to be cutting vertical grain blocks and attaching them to the eye joist on either side that basically mimic the bearing surface of this post so that the post above has a very solid uh, transferring surface into this post below. And those will be at every location where there's a post on the center and then on the outsides. They're kind of represented as dark blocks here on the plans. And that's where our timber frame will set and transfer all of its weight to the foundation. Our plans call for double rim joist in the stair opening. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed 
and we actually have an LVL hanger and I'm 99% sure that it goes at the end of this four foot piece here. But I special ordered that and I don't think I ever picked it up because I can't find it. I, I have this fuzzy recollection that I never went and got it. So we'll have to get that. I think that's okay because I think over here in this area, there's actually just a panel of inch and an eighth plywood. There's no warm board because our stairs will actually start somewhere over here. So we'll get that put in uh, probably tomorrow, uh, something like that. And there was something else I was gonna work on. I don't remember what it was, squash blocks. Oh, and I need to uh, fasten this post down. So we had just put a temporary toenail in this post and we wanted to put some GRKs in there to fasten it down to the sill plate there. this in the front you said right okay. much safer not safe but safer Hey, are you guys ready? I think it's finally time. Here he comes. The plan is to unload this with the backhoe, so I think that's why Jesse's this far away. And panel by panel, we're gonna lift it up there. So we should probably look at our plans and kind of pick up the panels that we need. Yeah. Because they're all different. So unloading this is gonna be strategic and I think so it makes sense to you. We have to show you kind of what our warm board plans look like. So we gave warm board our floor plan and from that they were able to create zones for us. And then based on the zones, they were able to create the panels that we needed, which is the image on the left here. And as you can see, there's a bunch of colorful dots and each dot represents a straight panel, a left panel, a right panel, or a double panel. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, I guess I won't go into the into detail as to what that means, but as you can see, the bottom left corner, which is where we're starting, which is the southwest side of the house, we can't just go throwing any panel there. It has to be a straight panel, or a left panel, actually. So we're, we're working from the bottom left corner to the bottom right corner. So hmm. it looks like we have three different types of panels. We're going to have to do a little bit of cutting, but if we follow this plan in theory, everything should work out perfect. This is one of the reasons that we uh, you know, chose warm board to work with because they do so much of the planning for you that you know, uh, for a homeowner to build, it just makes you know, total sense. But as a contractor or even as an engineer or specifier, I could see having a partner like warm board being super valuable because the first thing they do is they create the zone layouts. And when they do that, they actually create tubing runs for the zones. So for example, zone four is our kitchen and living room and dining room, but 
there's too much tubing for a single run within that zone. So they've actually created three separate runs just in that area. And then the hallway and the mudroom area is also the same zone, although it's a different tubing run. So they did a lot of this work for us. Once they have the tubing runs figured out, that's where they get their panel layouts from. And all the panels are clearly marked. Everything's clearly marked. This is a fantastic set of plans to work from. I can't imagine trying to figure this no. out on our own. We would get loster than lost. I have a question. I know people will be asking, mm -hmm. why are we doing radiant on our living level? Especially when we have radiant in our slab. We're not actually, I don't know how many of you know this, but we're not actually planning on using the radiant inner slab. We just don't want to rule it out. So all that work we did, we're not planning on using it. That's the thing about the slab is that it's, it's something you really don't want to retrofit. Uh, you could, but it would suck. So we just put it in there as a, yeah, no, never type of thing. So it's there. If we decide to use it, great. Uh, in the slab, it's high mass. And so changing the temperature of the slab would be quite difficult. You know, so uh, that's why we put it in the slab. We, we may use it, we don't really know. We don't know how the garage will end up being used. We did leave some workspace over here for working in inclement weather if we wanna be canning or doing some woodworking projects or whatever. Uh, we did radiant in the living level because that's where we're gonna be living. And so we wanna be able to control, climate control that area. Uh, the reason that we did warm board was, I mean, among many, was it's what's called a low mass radiant system. So obviously it uses inch and an eighth underlayment, plywood underlayment. And the theory behind that is that the water temperature is lower because it has less mass to heat up. And you're also able to control the temperature more precise. Um, so for example, during spring and fall, you know, like what was it 50 degrees this morning but two days ago it was 75 in the afternoon mm -hmm. if this slab is heated up it's going to take days to heat it up and days to cool it down it does not change temperature quickly but the warm board you know if you look at the forecast and it's going to be really hot you can turn your warm board down the temperature and keep the house comfortable otherwise you'll be opening the windows and closing the windows trying to regulate the temperature in the house it's just a fight so a lot of people use what's called shotcrete or gypcrete, which is just shallow concrete, maybe an inch, inch and a half thick. And that's less mass to heat up, but it still takes time to heat it up and cool it down. Uh, so with the warm board and whatever we put on there as a flooring material, that will be the total mass of that system. The other benefit is, there's so many, and we'll talk about them as we get it installed, but the bottom of the panels is marked with the tubing layout. So if you ever need to add something or modify the floor, it's, you're, there's none of this radiant roulette garbage <laughs> that we've been playing with the slab. Mm -hmm. You can clearly see where the tubing runs are marked and so you can add things after the fact. It's, not, it's none of this stuff that we've been doing, <laughs> which we really love and it's really fun and we wish we could do it more often, but yeah. Um, so that's just one more benefit to that. Um, and then you add a little bit of insulation and we'll have a really nice solid one step underlayment, structural, and radiant, all in one shot. That's pretty efficient. I guess, you know, whatever works. The way this is laid out, it's almost better to do that because the panels are staggered. Mm -hmm. You know, if we didn't have to stagger the panels, then we would be able to probably go east to west much quicker. But the way the panel layout's done, I think will actually be a little bit easier to go north-south. One, two, three, drop. Wow, look at all them apples. <laughs> How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven dead flies. Oh, flies? Oh. Fly massacre. Oh. Set it up there. 
It's pretty good. challenging time trying to figure out how much to bring up and in which order. Yay! Virtual high five! Right? Except we gotta put glue underneath of it. So yeah. Cool. So you've already worked with this stuff, right? Yeah, this adhesive. I actually know that this is a pretty good adhe adhesive, but um, yeah, we left the tube out. Well, we didn't leave it out. We just didn't bring it in when it rained yesterday and the cardboard got wet and the tube exploded this morning. Thankfully, it's pretty inexpensive. It's only about eight bucks a tube, so we only lost about four dollars. Like that? A little Bigger thicker. Ever had to relieve the pressure? Nope. Push the thumb button in. Yeah. Do you want me to help align? Um, no. You can help me kind of hold it up a little okay. bit. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go on the corner and help align it. So we need to come my way like a whole half an inch. You okay, you're supposed to have the tongues overhanging here and then you'll just rip it off at the end. Ready for screws? Ready to do it. Uh, Jesse made me a six inch measuring tool. Thanks, honey. <laughs> Uh, in this corner over here. So left, right, left, okay? We discovered that our eye joist has a little bow to it. So Jesse's pushing it out with his feet and I'm gonna screw. We're gonna fix it on the fly. Okay, so are you ready? Most important screw is that this one? one down here and then work your way the other way. Okay, that looks pretty good. Are you happy? Yep. Okay, for board number two. Yeah. Almost? Yep. Okay, I'll try to get it ready to come over. Okay. Um, let me see how far over here I can get. Okay. So this glue's okay to kind of push, right? Yep. Push, 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 push. Okay. I need you to push, push. That's what I need you to push, not pull. There you go. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay, we forgot our little spacer thingy. Wow. Thanks, warm board. Huh. Cool. Yeah, it's huge. Do you want it? Do you want it up there? Yeah. Their welcome kit is so nice. And pencils, look. Cool. Their uh, insulation kit's pretty nice. It's all matchy and straightforward. So these were supposed to go are supposed to go in, in here, Jesse. Looks good. So when we lay flooring, the tubing does not lay flush; it lays up. No, the tubing will be completely recessed. Feel this oh. lip underneath here. Okay. Yep. So even so though these won't be. Right. So okay. you don't want to damage this because right. it's just metal. The plastic will pop in. Okay. When you when you press it into the to the thing. Okay. So these help you align the panels. Basically, if your panel is offset, this won't go in. So we will be using these, but without them, we did a pretty good job too. <laughs> yeah, we'll use them on the future panels, yeah. I love that their panel layout system is so simple. Yep. And what makes a left a panel and a right panel is where the tongue and the groove yep. are. That's what determines those. 
So they look the same, but when you look at the tongue and groove, they're mm -hmm. not the same. Um, this is going to be crazy fun. Holy yeah. cow. A lot of this stuff doesn't really apply to us today because oh, it's more cool. about the tubing. Yep, they include the They include, they include the stuff. bit. They include the bit. All right, we don't even have to go hunting yeah, for thanks, the... Yeah, thanks, uh, I hate hunting for router bits. Ask me how I know about the hot tub router bit hunt story. Warm board is rated exposure one, so technically you could leave them exposed for one year and they'll stir still serve as a structural subfloor. Ooh. Let's not do that. Um, as sheets are placed, alignment pins are tapped into place. Oh, so they actually need to be tapped into place on the two outermost channels. Okay, let's show them. So here's a much better, bigger photo of what we're going after. So this is the panel we're on right now. Yeah. Um, our furniture has been removed, most of it but here's our living room. <laughs> yeah, living room, kitchen. So this is all zone four, and then we're gonna be working to the north into zone three with this panel. What's so, amazing, this is something we didn't plan, but pretty much our room size are exactly the size of a warm yeah, board panel. Turns out. So that's why it's nice to have simple design for like rookie home builders. Yeah, there's a couple three rooms. So our office, these little blue lines right here, those are called oh, custom, custom routes. Oh, custom routes, yep. So we'll actually put a whole panel in there, but we'll route her out using their template. Same thing in the bathroom. We'll have a couple in the master and then in the mud room. But this whole entire area, there's no custom routes at all. <laughs> whoop, whoop. So this is cool. Let's not let this get rained on. We almost paid three whole dollars to print this we ourselves. Would, we were gonna... <laughs> We were gonna pay someone to print this because yeah. we're like, boy, it sure would be nice to have a big set. And here, warm boards on top of it, yep. like hot dogs. And we got two sets. We did? Yeah. Because they knew we destroyed. Probably. <laughs> they must and us. some things are laminated down there that I didn't bring up. <laughs> Dude, they keep sweetening the I deal. I know, right? I'm pretty shocked. Are you preparing to cut our first board? I am. This board's not screwed down, but you can come on okay. over right now. I'm taking that board up. Okay. I'm about fed up with this drill. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Nice work. Once we get two roads in here, we'll bring sawhorses up here and we'll cut That's off the true. sawhorse. That'll be a lot easier. Yep. Try doing that and I'll get it done. It's been fun, y'all, but it's getting too dark, so we gotta get this cannon down before it's too dark to see and we break ourselves or the camera even worse. Show them a little bit about what we got done. I'm not ending the video. Oh. I'm just taking the cannon down. I smell what you're sniffing. That said, it's gonna be dark very quickly. We got three full panels on, and then we also got our first half on, and we got the tongue and the groove. We had to do a little bit of convincing, but it went. So we're feeling pretty optimistic. We're probably gonna work a little bit into the night because we didn't get started till pretty late, and we we're hoping to make a little more progress. Um, everything went really great today. We just had a lot of like little cleanups to do before we were ready for the warm board, um, but we're happy to have that done. We didn't poke a hole in our radiant drilling our post, so we're really happy about that. And we're hoping for an even better day tomorrow. I don't know if we're gonna finish our warm board, but hopefully we'll get more than halfway. Double. 